Hi and welcome to PM Coding. Today's tutorial will cover CSS text animation. We will build a project together that will look like this one's finished. Let's jump right in. I have the project folder in my code editor Visual Studio Code opened. Currently, there are no files yet added. For this project, you will only need two in total, the index.html and the style.css file, which I am creating here. I am starting off by adding the markup to the index.html. I am first adding the head section where you can add the site title. I am changing it to PM coding. Here I am also linking the style sheet. Let's add the body text next. Inside the body, we need to add a div element with the ID of text. This will contain the word hello. You can choose a different word based on your preference. Then I am adding six span elements. The first five of these will each hold one letter of the word hello. The last one will have the dot. For the dot, I am also assigning an ID to the span element. I am simply naming the ID dot. That is all we need for the HTML, so let's crack on with the CSS. First, I want to reset the style of every element. For this, I am using the universal selector, which will select every HTML tag on the page. As properties, I will specify margin as zero, padding as zero, and I will set box sizing to border box. Next, I am giving the body some styling to achieve the gradient background that we initially saw. The width I set to 100% so that it stretches across the whole page. The height I set to 100VH so that it covers the complete height of the visible screen. To the background image property, I am assigning a linear gradient. The gradient should transition from the left of the screen to the right. I can achieve this by passing 90 degrees as the first argument. Then we also need to add the colors. I am only using two, a magenta and a purple shade. You can of course change the colors and even add more if you prefer. I will also specify a background color just in case that the gradient cannot be displayed. This way we have a fallback so that the background does not remain white. Finally, I want the text on the page to be white, so I am also adding color white here. Let's style the text container next. First, I am giving it a width of 100% so that it too stretches the entire width of the page. I want to center the spans it contains exactly in the middle of the page. To center it horizontally, I am adding the property text align and I am setting it to center. To center it vertically, I am giving the div a position of relative. This enables me to position it relatively to its current position. I want to move it down 50% of the page's height from the top. For this, I am using top and I'm setting it equal to 50%. Then I am adding transform translate y minus 50%. By adding this, I can ensure that the text will be positioned exactly in the center of the page. Next, I am giving each span some styling. I am specifying a responsive font size and a responsive padding so that the project works both on smaller screens like mobile phones and desktops. Now let's create the animation for the letters. We need to define it using add keyframes. I will name mine appear. At the beginning of the animation, so at 0%, the opacity of the letters should be 0. They should also be positioned 200 pixels below their current location, so I will say bottom minus 200 pixels. At 100%, I want the opacity to be 1 and their position to be bottom 0. This way the text will return to its original position and be visible. If you look at the final animation though, you can see that the letters bounce around a little bit and do not just go up straight and stop immediately. To achieve this, we can add further stops to the animation, one at 70% and one at 85%. At 70%, the opacity should already be 1, as I want the letters to be fully visible. The position, however, is now going to be a positive number, as I want it to go higher up than the final position. I am going to set bottom to 15 pixels. 
At 85%, I want it to be lower than its final position, so I am setting bottom to minus 10 pixels. That's our animation for the letters. Now we only have to assign it to the spans to be able to see it in action. I am adding following properties here. Position relative, as I again want to position them relatively to their current position. I am adding bottom, minus 200 pixels, so that their non-animated position matches the first animation frame at 0% when the page loads. Opacity should be 0. Then I am specifying animation name as appear so that the browser knows which animation to use. The animation duration should be 2 seconds long. The animation timing function I am setting to ease out. This way the animation will be faster at the start than at the end. The animation fill mode should be forwards to ensure that once the animation stops, the final animation keyframe remains instead of it jumping back to the start. If it did not set this, the letters would change back to be minus 200 pixels lower with an opacity of 0. Now that we have done all this, let's look at the result. All the letters animate in from the bottom, but I want the letters to come in after each other. To do this, I can assign an animation delay to each. I will use the env of type selector for this. I want the second letter to have the first animation delay, so I am going to select it by using the selector span, colon, env of time, and pass in 2. This will select the letter E. I am giving it an animation delay of 0.2s. From here on, I am going to continue increasing the animation delay by 0.2s. To select the next letter, I am pausing free to the nth selector and then I am adding an animation delay of 0.4s as 0.2 increased by 0.2 is 0.4. I will quickly do the same for the remaining letters. Now each of the letters is coming in after the other. I am not sure if you have noticed, but when the letters animate in from the bottom, a scroll bar appears on the right as the letters are positioned off screen. To remove this, I can apply overflow hidden to the container, which in this case is the body. Now if I refresh, the scroll bar is not appearing anymore. For the final animation, I want the dot to fall in place from the top, so I will change the CSS for it. I am selecting it by its ID dot. To move it further up, I am giving it a property of bottom with 100 pixels instead of minus 200 pixels. Now to ensure that the animation we added to all the spans does not interfere with the dot, I have to change the selector to which we assigned the appear animation. So scroll back up to the spans and you can copy the properties of bottom and all the others that start with animation. You can then delete this from here and then create a new selector. This new selector is going to be span, colon, not, and then brackets. And then we just need to pass the ID of the dot element here. This will select all spans apart from the last one with the ID of dot. Inside, we then paste the code we just copied. Now all letters will be animated apart from the dot. For the dot, I need to create its own animation. I am defining it by using add keyframes again, and this one I will be naming dot. At 0%, I want it to be positioned 100 pixels from the bottom, and I also want the opacity to be 0. At 100%, I again want the opacity to be 1 and the position to be bottom 0. Here I am going to add a few more stops to make the dot bounce. At 50%, the opacity should be 1, the bottom should be 0. Then at 65%, the dot should bounce a little back up, so I am setting bottom to 15 pixels. At 75%, bottom should be 0 again. And at 90%, it is going to make its last bounce, so bottom should be set to 10 pixels. With this, our second animation is complete, and now we only have to add it to the dot selector. I will copy-paste the animation definitions we used for the other spans and paste it to the dot selector. The animation name should get changed to dot. 
The animation duration should be quicker, so I am setting it to 1 second. The timing function should be ease in instead of ease out. The animation fill mode can remain the same. And finally, I am changing the animation delay to 2.3 seconds so that it only starts when all the letters have appeared. I will first remove the span and selector which originally had the animation delay for the dot specified and instead I will be adding it to the dot selector. Let's see how the final results look like. This is it for this CSS text animation tutorial. I hope you found it useful. The complete code is available through my GitHub for you. If you like this video, please subscribe. I post coding tutorials every week. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Feel free to share your final project with me as well. I would love to see what you have created. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.